President Biden has defended the decision to withdraw the U.S. military from Afghanistan. Speaking earlier in the week, the president said the U.S. military mission will end by August 31st, and he called on the country's leaders to come together to prevent a civil war. We did not go to Afghanistan to nation build. And it's the right and the responsibility of Afghan people alone to decide their future and how they want to run their country. Reports suggest a thousand mainly U.S. troops could remain on the ground to protect diplomatic missions and Kabul's international airport. A Taliban spokesman told the BBC residual foreign troops would be considered an occupying force. All foreign forces should withdraw from the country, whether they are contractor, advisor and trainers, because they were part of occupation. That's a violation. We will react. But that reaction would be based on, on the decision of our leadership. As the U.S. and allies pull out, Afghan forces are preparing to take charge of security alone. The Taliban are rapidly retaking land across Afghanistan and are thought to now control more than a third of the country's 400 districts. I've been speaking to former Afghan President Hamid Karzai, who was leader of the country from 2001 to 2014, about the challenges Afghanistan is now facing. I asked him how he would sum up the presence of the United States and the West in Afghanistan in the last 20 years. I would categorize them in two ways. Compartment one, the support of the United States and its allies and the rest of the international community in rebuilding Afghanistan, its infrastructure, helping in education, helping in lots of other areas, was welcome, and it did produce immensely good results for Afghanistan and its people. And we are grateful for that, for all those countries that helped us. The other compartment, the military compartment that was intended to fight extremism and terrorism, that rather than doing the job correctly and where it was needed, begun to hurt and harass and bomb and imprison Afghans. That's where it failed. And that's where our failure today is. So would you say then that the entire so, mission has failed? The entire mission with regard to the stated objective of the United States and its NATO allies in defeating terrorism and extremism has failed. Because, let me repeat myself, they did not do what they should have done. They did what they should have not done, as I described earlier. But, but they, the other but... compartment of helping Afghanistan in civilian areas, in education, in rebuilding and reconstruction, that was successful. And you can see it clearly when you visit Afghanistan that there is something to show to the world. And, For and, that, and, and no doubt Afghanistan... All those countries and their people. No doubt Afghanistan has come a long way and it is not the country uh, that was invaded by the US in 2001. And, and before that we saw what the Taliban turned the nation into. However, there are many critics now who do say Afghanistan today is a failed state. Afghanistan today is not a failed state. As far as the Afghan people are concerned, they created a constitution, they went to the elections, they embraced democracy wholeheartedly. They went to school, they educated themselves. We have millions of Afghan boys and girls educated today. We did all that we could to put Afghanistan on the right track and to represent it well on the international scene. The failure of the state that one would describe, especially in the Western press, is exactly where the authority and the responsibility was more with the uh, United States and its NATO allies. That's where things have failed. And that's where we, the Afghan people, are also paying a price, a very heavy price. Well, outgoing uh, American General, uh, General Scott Miller, has warned of a full-scale civil war. How concerned are you about this? Well, he's very wrong. He shouldn't be saying that. Afghanistan, that, uh, it, exactly for this reason, I'm telling you that that has failed. Instead of saying that they have helped Afghanistan stabilize, they leave, and the general leaving is warning of a civil war. So that 
that means they have failed. But we Afghans have not. We will not fail. We will continue to rebuild our country and we will do all we can to talk to our, 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 our countrymen, the Taliban, and bring Afghanistan to peace. And hopefully this with the help of the region and also very much hopefully with the help of the United States and their Western allies. Well, today we're seeing district after district fall to the Taliban. I mean, what do you say to that? Well, it is sad. I call on the Taliban not to fight. And I call on the Afghan government to do all it can to work for peace. So I call on both sides, on the Taliban, that taking districts is not going to help them in the long term. And I call on the Afghan government, delaying, delaying going into serious peace talks will not help the country either. So both sides must sit down and talk as soon as possible for peace. And to recognize that all that's happening here in terms of fighting is in the interest of outsiders and against and at the peril of the Afghan people. As long as they, the Taliban are winning uh, on the battlefield, do you really think that a deal is possible? I mean, they feel quite emboldened right now. A deal is possible anytime. A deal is possible right now. Winning on the battlefield does not mean winning the country or building the country. And that will not be a win because the Afghan people want a country that belongs to all, that is moving forward that is represented in the world, that is recognized by the world, and where the Afghan people are seen, all of them, to have accepted a government, and that the will of the Afghan people is expressed in the creation of a government. Taking the country by the force of the gun will not help anyone, as it has not helped in the past. Are you concerned that Afghanistan could once again become a, a sanctuary for terrorists? It could be. Afghanistan became a sanctuary for terrorists, not because of the Afghan people, but because of those countries who wanted it, who used it for that purpose, especially after we uh, emerged from, uh, after the withdrawal of the Soviet forces from Afghanistan. It was um, exactly that, the use of extremism in Afghanistan that turned it into that and into the suffering of the Afghan people. We, the Afghans, will not allow it, we hope, the outsiders will not resort to that again. If that becomes the case, do you think the United States would make a return to Afghanistan? Well, the United States came in the name of fighting terrorism to Afghanistan 20 years ago. Did they fight it successfully? Did they fight it honestly? No. Therefore, the United States returning to Afghanistan in the name of fighting extremism, I, as an Afghan, would not welcome that. I'm sure every other patriotic Afghan will not welcome that. Former Afghan President Hamid Karzai. Well, I've also been speaking to the U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation, Zalmay Khalizad, and I asked him for his assessment of the situation given the recent territorial gains by the Taliban. The Taliban have made significant territorial gains in the last many weeks, and uh, uh, they are poised to make further progress although the Afghan forces also uh, seeking to find their bearing and to resist and maybe even push back. But in my judgment, uh, there is no military solution uh, to Afghanistan's problems. Well, this is something that you have been telling the Taliban for almost two years now. You struck a deal with them in February 2020. You've been telling them uh, to reduce the violence. You've been pushing for peace. They don't seem to be listening. I think that the, what is going on is that uh, there is, uh, while there are negotiations beginning, uh, they're jockeying for relative position in those negotiations. Sometimes as you move on the political process in such wars, conflict intensifies as people try to position themselves for a better or a more dominant position in those negotiations. I'm not surprised uh, that the conflict is intensified. Uh, but. Uh, I am surprised by the progress that the Talibs have made, and I'm hoping that uh, the Afghan forces, with the help from their friends, will find their bearing and push back. But again, I repeat, there is no military solution. Uh, a political solution is what's required. 
You've said that uh, just now that the Afghan forces uh, will have support from their friends. Does that include the United States? Yes, it, uh, it will. Uh, the president said uh, we are committed uh, to supporting the Afghan security forces. Uh, we will support them financially. We will uh, support them uh, with their maintenance uh, issues. Uh, yes, we will, but nevertheless, we believe that the key requirement is not uh, warfare, more war in Afghanistan, but what the people are yearning for is peace. Will you intervene in the event of Taliban mass atrocities? Well, that's a question that's hypothetical, and that would be a decision that would have to be made uh, by the president. And, uh, but uh, uh, um, as of now, uh, what the policy is that our combat role will end at the end of August, and all combat forces will be out of Afghanistan by then. Will you intervene if the Taliban uh, want to overrun Kabul? Well, those are um, uh, abstract uh, uh, questions. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not, not entirely abstract, if, uh, Ambassador uh, Khalizad, because they're on, uh, you know, around Kabul. They've surrounded Kabul. It's not an unlikely scenario. I, I don't believe it's a likely scenario. And so it is a what if question. And the Taliban have said that they will not attack uh, provincial capitals. We hold them to that. Uh, commitment that they have made uh, and as I, uh, I repeat that for Afghanistan's war to, uh, to end there has to be a political agreement, an agreement uh, that uh, respects the right of all Afghans, uh, an agreement uh, that ends the war, uh, an agreement uh, that uh, uh, leads to an Afghanistan that does not pose a threat to the international community. We will not recognize a government uh, in Afghanistan that is imposed by force. And that is the case with regard to many other countries, including some that recognized Taliban the last time uh, uh, they were in power. Uh, General Scott Miller, the top US uh, military commander in Afghanistan, has uh, said that civil war is certainly a path that can be visualized if it continues on the trajectory it's on. This should be a concern for the world. Is he right? Yes, he is right. Uh, that is an alternative uh, among the f alternative futures for Afghanistan. Uh, that and that's obviously would be terrible. Uh, we are all concerned about that uh, possibility. Uh, we, uh, we should all do what we can, and we are doing, uh, to uh, preclude that. And that's why we're emphasizing a political settlement uh, and as soon as possible. But uh, that is a concern. Uh, help us understand the Taliban's relationship with al-Qaeda. Well, uh, the Taliban did uh, host al-Qaeda, um, and uh, 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 as a result of that relationship and the attack that happened in the United States in 2001, the United States attacked uh, Afghanistan, uh, liberated the country, uh, overthrew the Taliban regime. Uh, the Taliban had, had been at war uh, now for uh, 20 years. Uh, they, they tell me now that uh, uh, they would not allow that part of the agreement, indeed, uh, allow their territory, Afghanistan, if they become part of the future government, that uh, would uh, to, uh, allow al-Qaeda or any other group or individuals to threaten the United States uh, from uh, Afghanistan. Uh, that's positive. We have that commitment from the Taliban. We hold them to that. Uh, do you believe them? Because the president says, Joe Biden well, said yesterday, it, it, I, I don't trust them. So when they say that we will break well, ties I mean, with Al-Qaeda... Inter, 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 international relations is not built on trust. Uh, uh, inter, uh, we, uh, we hold them to the agreement, uh, but we are also uh, will keep an eye on the situation in Afghanistan and will posture ourselves militarily to be able to respond uh, to, pre, uh, to deal with the threat should it re-emerge uh, in Afghanistan. Um, we, 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 we believe in, 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 in uh, having the capability uh, to respond, but we hold the Taliban accountable because, as I said, our ag agreement to withdraw from Afghanistan uh, is, uh, as, is part of a package, which is a key part of, of I, it. Including is the commitment reducing of the violence, Taliban. that was part of the package uh, too, and that hasn't happened. A key part of the package was not to attack the uh, uh, 
coalition forces. And I want to uh, remind everyone that uh, the Taliban did keep their word on that and did not uh, uh, attack us significantly. And there has been no fatality since the agreement was signed on the part of the United States forces or coalition forces. And we are withdrawing safely uh, based on the understanding that we and, have and, and with the lives? Talibs. With regard to the... And it was, that has been a, the tragedy, uh, and uh, uh, we are very concerned about the violence uh, that has taken place, continues to take place, although a lot of recent uh, progress that the Taliban are making on the ground is based on decisions that some of the elements of the security forces are making to stop fighting and, and uh, joining the Talibs. But uh, violence is unacceptable, it's too high, Ambassador Khalizad, thank you very much for your time. Good to be with you.